Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your top 10 global weather extremes for Wednesday. And we're tracking quite a few systems around the planet and we kick off with number one, which is up here around Greenland and Iceland in the Greenland Sea, Norwegian Sea area. Quite a large low pressure zone. In fact, it's the largest we think in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. A lot of wind coming here out of Greenland, northerlies, so very, very cold. 110 kilometer an hour gusts in that zone. In fact, it's almost sustained at 110, which is very strong. It's about 65, 70 miles an hour. So basically hurricane force as it just comes off that part there. It's not like that the whole way around it, which is why it's not exactly like a hurricane. We've got uh, snow falling in Svalbard. It's snowing very heavily along the eastern side of Greenland. Snow in Iceland and a rain snow mix as you come up towards parts of Norway and Sweden. On the rain map, you can see where that precipitation is falling, the low centered just here. So all this weather going around it like that, Iceland, Scotland, Norway, uh, all getting some of that wet weather from that large area of low pressure. Let's move down further into the Atlantic and we've got two tropical storms at the moment. Peter out here to the left, Rose out here to the right. Neither of them are expected to become a hurricane because the conditions just aren't quite ripe for it. But Bermuda is just here. So this is again putting Bermuda into a little bit of a risk. But if it's a post-tropical low, it will just be a little bit of wind, some rain and uh, a, a boost up in the swells and wave heights in the area in the next few days ahead. Number three on our list takes us over into the Pacific Ocean now and around the Aleutian Islands. We've got a very large area of low pressure. You know, the deadliest catch where they catch the crabs out here in the sea. Northerly winds coming down. It'll be very cold, starting to get that wintry feeling returning. And this low then pushes energy up and towards parts of Canada. Not quite pushing straight and directly because there's a zone of high pressure in here, but the two systems are merging and helping to create a bit of rain and that's falling also as snow when you get into the mountains, a real feeling that winter is getting closer in parts of the USA and Canada, especially up here around the Yukon, all that snow, it'll be snowing around parts of Whitehorse and snow flurries coming down into the hills and ranges into parts of um, British Columbia as well. So very interesting, Vancouver down here, a few snow flurries on the mountains around you like Grouse Mountain, get into the snow season, not far away now. The next low pressure system, number four on our list, is actually here around Indi uh, India and Bangladesh. Now this system is driving in some very heavy rain into Bangladesh at the moment. Uh, part of the monsoon rainfall, and you've got these winds, these southerly winds coming up from the equator, really pushing up the, those moisture levels. So we're seeing a lot of rain falling, as I say, around parts of India, going into Bangladesh itself. Darker, not so bad over there, fairly dry in fact in the plains, and you go up to the higher level areas, you've got some bigger downpours further north, thunderstorms pretty much non-stop at this time of the year. There have been a lot of thunderstorms in this region over the last couple of weeks. Number five on our list takes us over to Africa and taking a look at rainfall for uh, Wednesday in that part of the world. The usual thunderstorms around Nigeria uh, and Cameroon, also around the Congo, but we've got some downpours in Ethiopia and Kenya, which will be very welcome, and also some parts of Tanzania. Number six on our list, this is high pressure, the largest high pressure zone around Europe and uh, in fact really the, the largest high pressure zone probably in the northern hemisphere at the moment is this one just west of Ireland and it's quite a big zone. It comes right in across into Europe itself, into the continent and so France is very settled, so are parts of Germany. There's not a lot really going on at the moment but a little bit of a low pressure system down here near Spain and Morocco is keeping a few showers and downpours active in that zone. Okay, we move along now, something a little bit different uh, for number seven. We head off over to the Canary Islands. Now we've got at the moment this erupting volcano near La Palma. Now this is likely to produce some ash in the atmosphere, obviously, if we get some volcanic eruptions. So where is it going to go? Well, with a northerly, the good news is it stays mostly out at sea. I mean, we're not, we, we saw the lava flows yesterday burning down houses. It was absolutely incredible to see the video coming out on Twitter from La Palma. But we're seeing those northerlies blowing through. I don't think ash is going to be a major problem from this eruption, but if it is, it's likely to come in around some parts of the Western Sahara. Whether you'll notice that compared to the sandstorms, I probably doubt it. Okay, number eight on our list, again, high pressure zones, this time in North America, big zone here across America. Uh, these are the Great Lakes and going into Canada. But you might have noticed here, 
there's a little bit of low pressure. This map shows high pressure in white, and you can see another big high pressure zone out here in the Atlantic, but the lower pressure zone in the darker shading. So where you've got the two winds meeting, that's where you get some rain, some convergence. So we're seeing some heavy rain in a straight line going up into Quebec even, but starting as far south as Kentucky. So we're going to be seeing those big downpours around parts of Indianapolis, Detroit, right across southern Ontario. So, you know, London, St. Mary's, Kitchener, Stratford, those places all getting some big downpours as that system slowly moves along and also getting further north up there around places like Huntsville. And moving along to number nine, we go to the other end of the world to where I am in Auckland, New Zealand. We've got a low pressure zone forming out here in the Tasman Sea. It's likely to produce 150 millimeters for the upper South Island. That might cause a few slips and floods. But that low here pulling down subtropical air from Fiji, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, and into New Zealand's North Island and upper part of the South Island. But that low is nothing compared to the storm down here towards Antarctica. Very normal at this time of the year to get very big storms hugging the Antarctic ice shelf. And so when you take a look at it with the air pressure put into it, 936 hectopascals or millibars. So that's a good, deep, stormy system, but pretty much where it should be. And the low up here producing some windy weather coming in through tonight for northern New Zealand, but over in Australia, very calm with high pressure. And number 10, the final one on our map today, the thunderstorms that are occurring around parts of Central and South America, especially from sort of Panama, Costa Rica, around to Venezuela. Uh, we've got heavy thunderstorms and downpours coming in around Colombia and into the Brazil side, as well as Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia. So it's a very busy day with a lot of thunderstorms, but again, it is very normal for this time of the year in this part of the world. And that is all from me. Our final image of the day is coming from Antarctica. We've shown you this before, but it is a very cool image showing the big storms here, all the low pressure, which you can see in uh, the purple coloring and this sort of orangey pink coloring. I don't even know what color that actually is, but it's that color is low pressure. High pressure is in the white and the yellow. So we've always got that high pressure zone parked over the South Pole. There's a reason why Antarctica is the driest continent on Earth. And that is why it's that high. But all these storms around it at the moment show that uh, even though we're going into spring, because it's the equinox, of course, on Thursday around the world. So that means that the nights become longer than the days for the northern hemisphere but the days become longer than the nights for where I am in the Southern Hemisphere. That is all from me. Thanks again for all the amazing comments on YouTube. Please do keep them coming. We'll be back again on Friday with our next top 10 global weather extremes update. We'll see you then.